tubers for number two of learning Premiere Pro. Now, obviously, we're still in the basic stuff. Um, tell you what, I'll put a link when when I start doing some more advanced stuff. I'll put a link in this um, page to an advanced tutorial for you guys. Um, but we're just going to pick up where we left off. So, importing clips is where we're going to take it from. Basically, make sure we're on our project panel. Right click import very simple and then on windows it looks slightly different but just navigate to your footage so i'm gonna um i'm just gonna grab a random piece of footage import oh and if you get that then you've got a problem let's try that again shall we import tell you what i've got a folder called footage i'm gonna go there and I'm just gonna okay none of my footage will work that is not good okay well I've got a piece of audio and I'm gonna import a piece of footage and I've got another piece of audio this is not looking good people um, Maybe I should restart recording this tutorial. You know what? I'm not going to. An alternative way of importing, if you load up Windows Explorer or Finder, you can just find your footage. Tell you what, let's go to J-Ho. Don't ask. And let's grab the footage. And there we've got some footage in here. Now what you can do, as you can see, you've got a little preview in this box up here. Uh, but sometimes you can't actually see what's going on up there. Um, so what you can do is you can double click it. It loads up into the source box. And here you can scrub through the clip, etc, etc. Um, what you can also do in here, uh, as well as playing it and previewing it, is you can <laughs> scale down the clip. So if we check this out, say I wanted the clip to end there, I can press here, set out point, go to the beginning, set in point, and then when I bring it in, drag it from here into our timeline, I've only got that beginning bit. And then if I were to extend it out and drag it in, then I've got it in here. This makes it much more like tidy when you come to edit and everything. To delete the clips, you can highlight them and press a backspace. Um, but let's say I want the clip. What you can do with editing here, right? I've I'm going to reset my workspace because it's going to look different to you. Ah. Uh. Here we go. Back where we want to be. Let's grab our sequence. If you double click on a sequence, you can tell it's a sequence because it's got this little icon there. That indicates an audio, and that indicates an audio and video file. Um, double click on our sequence to load it into our timeline. You can have more than one sequence, which is really handy. Say you just wanted to edit a particular scene, you could click on this item, new item new sequence and then it gives you all the settings again press OK you've then got sequence 2 it's going to automatically load up here you've got sequence 1 and 2 in these two tabs <laughs> sorry my nose is blocked it's probably really annoying um, and then you can like put a piece of audio in sequence 2 and here's a cool thing grab sequence 2 pull it into sequence 1 and you've now got sequence 2 hit the spacebar to start playing in there obviously there's nothing there so it's not going to show up but you see what I mean okay right over here you'll see your these two things sorry I messed that up for me right you got your tools yeah you with me so over here you've got your tools so what can you do with these tools well let's bring our clip in here the most the two tools that you really want to be focusing on is the select tool and the razor blade tool 
Now, they are my most used tools. I imagine they are for most editors, and th this is why they're so good because the razor blade will cut the clips, and the selection tool will do everything else. Use the keyboard shortcut V to um, to get the selection tool, and C for the razor blade. Um, as you notice, when when I brought the clip in shorter, it still lets me scale it out, which is brilliant because if I decided that was too short, I don't have to then re bring it back in again. Right, okay. Okay. The other tools we're not gonna go into just yet, but the other good tool is the hand tool with the H key. Um that lets you just grab and move around the timeline. For navigation around the timeline, two very good shortcuts is the plus and the minus key. Press the plus key to zoom in, or the equals key, and the minus key to zoom out. Very handy, very, very handy. And then you can use a scroll wheel to navigate across. Okay, so press the V button to go back to the selection wheel. If I'm going a bit fast, sorry about that. I'll try and go slower next time, just say if you think I'm going too fast. And if not, then just go back and watch the video again. Or if you missed a bit, rewind. It's just I don't want you to get bored. Right, okay. So what else can we do? Well we can add a title. So how do we do that? Well here's our video clip and say I want I want a title to come over the top of here. By the way guys, when the symbol changes to this red thing with two arrows, that means I can crush it in or out. And you see this? What what does this yellow line mean? Well that is basically the opacity of the clip. So let's go over the clip and bring the opacity down. As you can see you can't see it. Half opacity. That's basically on or off. That's what that means. See it's dimming, it's dimming and then it's off. And it's the same for the audio, you're bringing it down a level, but with the audio you can actually push it higher than it is by default, which makes it play louder. Grab this thing to scrub through, etc, etc. Right, okay, so say I want to add a title, well there's two ways of doing this. Um, you can load up your tools editor, or go title, new title, default still, or something like that. Or, I like to keep my workflow the same, so I, for a new item I always go to this new item icon, click it, go title, and then, as you can see, it gives you options for the title, I'm just going to accept the defaults. Now, mine loads up here because I've moved the window to here, however yours will, um, I'm going to This is what yours will be like. You're going to get this floating window, yeah? Okay. So, by default, it's going to be on the type tool. You can drag a box that you type into, but it becomes very restricting. So, Command Z or Control Z to undo that. Just click anywhere and start typing. And I'm going to call mine title. You've got lots of controls, I think. I can't see that very well, so I've got two options. What I could do down here on the color, I could make it black might make it stand out however I think that that still doesn't stand out very well so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make it white enter to accept that and down here I'm going to add an outer stroke press add make it black and increase the edge size and then I accept that, click on this arrow tool just to come away from there. Now I've now got a title that stands out really well. Now to make your titles look prof professional you don't want them in random scattered positions. Well you might do but if you want it to look neat then you've got these two center options which are really good. If you press center and center here then it centers it completely. Now the disadvantage of drawing a box you see, say I drew a box and wrote title and accepted that and then I press center and center You see it's not in the center and that's because it's centering the box not the title which is why it's always best to just click and then start titling 
You see what I mean? You can increase the scale.